Hey Isopod fans, this is Wally Kern with Supreme Isopods, and today's the day we're going to show you the king of isopods. Stay tuned. The Isopod Vlog. Yes, like I said, this is the king of isopods. The king of isopods. Liar. We've seen this already. This one's the king, that one's the king. I love this guy's videos, but come on, we've seen this already before. Let's go ahead and take a look at these Porcelio Expanses, and I think you're going to be impressed. This is a magnificent isopod, certainly one of my favorites. This is the one everybody wants. Okay, so that one's the king. We're going to do another video on the king of isopods, a second king of isopods. There can only be one king. Today we're going to talk about Porcelio Magnificus. So why do I think Porcelio Magnificus is the king of isopods? I can't believe this guy. That's the second one, and we're supposed to believe him that there's a third one? I, I just can't believe it. This is the coolest isopod out there, and this is my favorite. Porcelio Hoffman Segei. If it's on the Aquarimax Pets t-shirt, dead center, it has to be the king of isopods. See? There you go. Another one. Are you going to keep watching this stuff? King of isopods. One, two, three. How many are there? Come on. I'll tell you what. I can't watch this anymore. Y'all watch. I'm not going to. I'm going to get out of here. Go racing. Woo, Chris Kern. Chris Kern, go racing. All right, I've already done three King of Isopod videos, but this is one of my favorites, absolutely favorites. I started working with these isopods about a year ago, a little bit over a year ago, really struggled with them. This is one of those large Spanish isopods. Everybody struggles with them. I think I got down to about three from a group of 10 or 11. I worried about them. I did a lot of other research, talked to a lot of people about this isopod and those giant Spanish isopods, learned a lot, and finally I think I kind of nailed a couple of things. Let's go ahead and check them out. Oh, before we do, I want to tell you, watch to the end because there's going to be one really, really quick, very important note on these giant Spanish isopods that you're going to want to know that will save you a lot of headaches with these. Go ahead and take a look at these Porcelio Boulevardi. I have three other labels on this tub. The orange means that I got them from Red Spugs. The green means that we got some Mankai. The orange label that was marked FF means that unfortunately I have some Florida Fast in this enclosure and I'm trying to clean it up as much as possible. So let's take a look at the, the enclosure. I have some egg cartons on the left and that's very, very important. What I found is that some of these larger Spanish isopods like a lot of isolation. They like areas where they can get away from the group and especially the females and raise their young. You can see that the substrate is about an inch, inch and a half. It's not so mandatory with these isopods, the, the depth of the substrate. I have the sphagnum moss over on the right for the moist area. I have a cucumber here that they've started eating. I feed a lot of varied foods, and we'll get into that in just a minute. Let me pull away these egg cartons, and we'll take a look at the isopods. And before we do this, I notice that I have just a few dried leaves in this enclosure. It's very important to have these dried leaves, so let me go ahead and add a few additional right now before I forget and do the video and completely forget to before I forget and do the video and then not come back and add these dried leaves. I like to add oak leaves or maple leaves. I really, really prefer a hardwood leaf over some of the other leaves. I mentioned that they like to hang out on these egg cartons. Here's a bunch of them right now. All of these Porcelio Boulevardi are babies from this last year. I've since lost the three adults that I had left after I purchased the 10 or 12 originally about a year and a half ago. And again, these are babies. These are ready to breed right now. In fact, we might see some mankai in just a moment. 
Hey guys, is it time to flip over this cork bark? Let's go ahead and have a look. And hopefully we find the rest of the Porcelio Boulevard under this cork bark. And you can see that the Florida Fass are already leaving. I've got about a dozen or so left in this enclosure and I've tried to clean them up, but we'll get there. Again, these are all babies from this last year, a good group. They're doing very, very well. I've not lost any in a long time, and I'm hoping that they'll start breeding very, very shortly. You can just see the beauty of these animals. I love the yellows. I love orange, but I really, really love the yellows in this animal. I want to point a couple of things out. The one that's moving on the bottom, that's a male. You can see because it has a very, very long pair of Europods. The one in the middle right now is another male, and the one that just got climbed all over has the smaller Europods. That's the female. On the far right, that's a female that I just moved away from. And on the far left is another female. And these are getting just about ready to breed, just about at that size. You can see that male hovering over the other two there. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a mankai actually under that female. Let's get another view of some of the other isopods on this piece of uh, cork bark. And at the top, you can see another female. I don't know what the one on the bottom is. Might be another female. And you can see little yellow dots running around. Those are babies. Those are little mankai of these Porcelio bolivari. Can you see it right there? Little yellow dot. And another one just under these. There it goes. Always love to see babies in this enclosure. So this means last year's group of isopods are now breeding, and I'm getting a second generation of the Bolivari. Let's go ahead and jump over to that group of two females that we saw a little bit earlier, and you can see clearly that smaller bolivari at the bottom. While we take a look at these, I do, do want to mention that these large, giant Spanish isopods really, really need a dry enclosure. They should always have a moist end with that sphagnum moss, but they have to have probably around 75% of their enclosure bone dry and a good Place for them to hide over that, that dry area. I also like to have that cork bark extend from the dry area over to the moist area so they have a bridge between the two areas. Provide a wide range of food, shrimp, dried fish, flake food, mushrooms, pressed gecko diet, and supreme isopod chow, and do provide a lot of calcium. Let's go ahead and take a look at the underneath of this cork bark, and hopefully you can see a couple of mankai, just babies, running around there. Very, very, very happy to see that. As we take this last look at these bolivari, let me mention that tip that I mentioned before. That is, if you can minimize any mold in these enclosures, that will hugely benefit these Porcelio large Spanish isopods. If you have any questions on this species or any of the other large Spanish isopods, please leave a comment below. Thanks everyone for watching. If you like this video, hit that like button. Subscribe with notifications all. Thanks for watching.